We've defined exponential functions as functions that can be written in the form a times b to the x, some coefficient times a growth factor raised to the variable. When it's written this way, we call it standard form. But notice part of this definition. It says an exponential function can be written that way. It doesn't have to be written that way. It might still be an exponential function even when it's written in a different form. And we want to be able to identify when something is exponential by figuring out if we can write it in that form. So for example, here we have a function 2 raised to the x plus 3. This is not the right form because there should only be an x in the exponent, not a more complicated expression like we see here. But it turns out we can write this in the standard form. Here's how we're going to proceed. First of all, since we have a sum of two things in the exponent, we want to try writing that a different way. And so it's going to be useful to remember this property of exponents. If I have two numbers added together in the exponent, I can split that up into a product. x to the m plus n is the same as x to the m times x to the n. This is a property you've seen in an algebra class before this. So let's see how we could use that in this example to rewrite the function in the desired way. So if we start with 2 to the x plus 3 and apply this property of exponents using x as m and 3 as n, then we can rewrite it as 2 to the x times 2 to the 3, the right side of our exponent property. Now 2 to the 3, we can simplify that some more. 2 to the 3 is just 8. And these two things are being multiplied together, and it doesn't matter the order that you multiply numbers, so we can write the 8 first before 2 raised to the x. And now that's the form we want. 8 times 2 to the x is exactly the form a times b to the x. So this thing, even though it was written differently at first, really is an exponential function. To do problems like this, it's useful to remember uh, some of the properties of exponents. So the one we just covered uh, allows you to split up a sum in the exponent. A similar property allows you to break up a difference in the exponent. A negative exponent can be thought, as of, thought of as a reciprocal. And either you can take the reciprocal of x raised to this power, Notice that we drop the negative sign when we write it this way. Or you can take the power of the reciprocal. So the reciprocal of the power or the power of the reciprocal. Both of those work. They're e equivalent ways of writing the same value. And another thing to remember is if you have a product in the exponent, you can split that up and you end up with x raised to one of those numbers from the product and then that whole quantity gets raised to the other number. Let's see how those can help us. Here we're going to write uh, this function in standard form. So this time our variable is t instead of x but that's not going to change the overall form we want. So how can we proceed? Well, 3 raised to the negative t. I don't want a negative t. I just want a t in the exponent. So somehow I want to remove that negative from in front of the t. And to do that, I can use one of our properties of exponents that changes a negative exponent into a reciprocal. So here I have the power of the reciprocal. One third is the reciprocal of 3. Therefore, the function I wanted can really be written as 1. Remember, there's always a hidden 1 in front of a uh, uh, term like this. So 1 times 1 third raised to the t. And that's the standard form. Here's another example. 2 raised to the 3x. So just like the last problem, I've got a 3 where I don't want it. 
I want to somehow get that out of the way so that the only thing in my exponent is x. Well, I can use another property of exponents from a few slides back that lets us split up a product so that we take one power of the base first and then an another power of that entire expression in parentheses. 2 to the 3 can also be written as 8. So the function we're looking at is equivalent to 8 raised to the power x. And as before, we can imagine a hidden 1 out front. So this function can be written in the standard form 1 times 8 to the x. Let's do one more example that involves putting several properties of exponents together. So this time we have a function 2 raised to the negative 2x plus 1. And I want to get it into a form where the only thing in the exponent is the variable. So let's start by splitting up that sum using a property of exponents that lets us change a sum in the exponent to a product two powers of x multiplied, uh, two powers of two multiplied together. Now the negative 2x we can think of as a reciprocal so that's how this 2 became a 1 half and we got rid of notice there's no minus sign there because we took the reciprocal of the 2. And we did one more thing to simplify 2 raised to the 1 is just 2. Now I can also use the property from the last example to split up this exponent by taking 1 half and first raising it to the power 2 and after I do that raising the result to the power x. Now if I simplify what's inside these parentheses 1 half squared that's 1 fourth. And now I have basically the form I want the only thing in the exponent is the x and as in a previous example I can bring the 2 in front so I get the form I'm used to with the coefficient in front of a power of the growth factor. So the original function which looked like it was written in a completely different form can actually be written in our standard form with a equal to 2 and b equal to one-fourth.